You are locked on Cougars. Welcome into a Wednesday edition of the podcast. Hope you all are doing well out there in Cougar Nation. Got a lot to cover on today's show. Our reinforcements potentially on the horizon for the BYU basketball program for yet another player enters the transfer portal and Gavin Baxter. We'll talk about that. We'll also get to some BYU football questions as well as our player countdown. Number 49 of the all-timers when it comes to BYU football. We'll reveal who that is ahead on today's show and a busy Wednesday slate of games for BYU sports as well. Well, so we got a lot of a lot to cover, excuse me, ahead on the podcast. And let's dive right in. This is the Locked On Cougars podcast for April 20th, 2022. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Once again, you are Locked On Cougars. My name is Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the Zone Sports Network in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. And a huge thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on on the BYU Cougars. Uh, by the way, if you guys have not checked this out already on YouTube, do it. You can look at my lovely face. Hi, I'm waving at everybody who's watching this on YouTube. Wearing my jazz gear. I support my hometown team. I grew up a jazz fan. I work for the flagship station of the Utah Jazz. So you know what? Go Jazz. 1-1 with the Dallas Mavericks looking ahead to Game 3 in that playoff series tomorrow night at Vivint Arena. Uh, I'm going to be rooting on the boys and hoping they can win it. But let's talk some BYU basketball. It's a nice tie-in with the Utah Jazz. But BYU basketball had yet another player, Gavin Baxter, entering the NCAA transfer portal yesterday. And this is a bit of a shock and awe, it feels like, for BYU fans. Now six players have entered the transfer portal for BYU this offseason so far. And who knows if they're going to be more. I do not, I'm, I'm not reporting anything, but at this point, who wouldn't want to enter the, the, enter the transfer portal? It appears for BYU basketball, to be honest. It, it just seems like it's very in vogue to look for something new. But Gavin Baxter is entering the NCAA transfer portal. He has one year of eligibility remaining, just like Gideon George. There was a large thought, and I had heard this earlier on, that he was planning on giving up the sport, moving on with life, but apparently he wants to play one more year. And I'll be frank, I am fully expecting Gavin Baxter to land at the University of Utah alongside Chris Burgess. Uh, don't quote me on that if it doesn't come to fruition, but for all intents and purposes, everybody I have talked to, it appears that Gavin Baxter is the most likely to end up at Utah with Coach Burgess. I know some of you are saying, well, what about Caleb Lohner, Jake? I have heard in the last 24 hours, have enough, I have had enough conversations with folks who are more familiar with the thinking of what Lohner's going about that I'm actually expecting Caleb Lohner to end up out of state rather than going to the University of Utah. There was some initial thought that, yes, he would go to Utah and join uh, Coach Burgess up on the hill in Salt Lake City. But it appears at this point, Caleb Lohner, his intentions are to go out of state. And then with regards to Gideon George, the other big headliner when it comes to the transfer portal for BYU right now, let me just put it this way. He's most likely, unless he goes pro, he's going to be wearing green and gold next year. And it happens to be a university, based on what I'm hearing, on the front range of the Rockies. You can do the math. I'll let you come to your own decision on what school I am referring to, but it should not be hard to put together. It's like a two and two. Like What's two plus two? Oh, five? No. Four, you guys will figure it out. But there's the latest with regards to the transfer portal and what I am hearing in the past 24 hours. Now, let's talk about some potential good news on the horizon for BYU basketball because Lord knows it has been a rough go of things. The soap opera that devolved or evolved from my initial reporting of both Gideon George and Caleb Lohner and the transfer portal, Nick Emery firing pot shots at BYU and Mark Pope in particular, Jake Toulson going back at him, then Jenna Emery, the wife of Nick Emery, sounding off on social media, on Instagram in, in this case, saying that uh, Coach Pope is a liar and a fraud. Who knew what I was getting myself into when I made that initial report? But nonetheless, I, I that appears to be in the rearview mirror. Uh, Jenna Emery put up another post on Instagram yesterday saying, in essence, that Nick is not allowed to talk about this stuff on 
Twitter anymore with a kind of smiling emoji. She knows that he can't help himself. And it is what it is. Nick Emery is going to do as Nick Emery wants to do. It's very clear at this point. Am I of the opinion that he needs to give it up after three years of bashing on the coach that told him to move on? I know that it was reported that he was uh, going to retire from basketball due to injuries, that type of stuff. I can tell you this much. It was not just Nick Emery deciding I'm done. There was a gentle shove out the door. Let's just put it that way from Mark Pope and his staff when they arrived at BYU. But Nick Emery has held that grudge for three years and he cannot, he cannot uh, get that itch scratched apparently. And he needs to move on from it. But at this point, I think you have to realize that he is going to be who he is. That That is a very uh, clear thing that he is just going to go about doing things that he is the, the way he's going to do it. that That's what I'm trying to say. But uh, I digress on that. So let's talk about some of the good news for BYU basketball. Uh, some good news in the form of some guys who are apparently going to make uh, official visits to BYU, one of which who is a bona fide, if not the most bona fide scorer at the collegiate level. He goes by the name of Antoine Davis. He is from Detroit Mercy University, and he is maybe the most prolific scorer in college basketball right now. He is going to make a visit. This coming from John Rothstein of CBS Sports. He'll make an official visit to BYU. It sounds like uh, Davis is going to visit Maryland, I believe, today. There's another visit set up for this weekend for him, so I would expect if he makes that official visit to BYU, it's probably sometime next week. Robbie McCombs from Vanquish the Foe seems to think the same. I've saw, seen that. Uh, some of you may have never heard the name of Antoine Davis, but I can tell you this much. He is just an absolutely incredible bucket getter. That is probably the best term for me, the bucket getter in the highest sense of the, of the word. In four seasons playing at Detroit, by the way, he's playing for his father with Detroit Mercy. He is averaged 24.6 points per game and 4.3 assists on 41% shooting from the floor and 36% shooting from three. He has four games in his career of 40 plus points, including a career high 48 point outing. He's currently number 22 all time in the NCAA record books with regards to points scored. And if he has a monster year, which could be the case if you were to pick a university that'll give him the ball like he had at Detroit. He could end up as the number two all-time scorer in NCAA history behind the great piece, uh, Pistol Pete Maravich. So this is a guy who checks all the boxes. A guy who can run an offense, he initiated the offense at Detroit Mercy playing for his father, can get points. He's not the biggest guy in the world, six foot one, 160 pounds, based on what I saw from the roster. But if you want a guy who can just fill it up and get you points when you need points, Antoine Davis appears to be that guy. Now, there's an interesting caveat to all of this, and this comes by way of the Detroit News. Uh, his father, so uh, Antoine Davis's father, is the head coach, Mike Davis, of Detroit Mercy. He said there's a good chance that Antoine Davis could earn well into the six figures on a name, image, and likeness deal at a school more high profile where, than Detroit Mercy, where there are no current sponsorship deals for players in place. So Antoine Davis is doing this as much for an opportunity to expand his profile but also to cash in on NIL deals. And BYU, if you're going to pitch this to anybody, you better pitch hard that BYU can help him. You pitch the Built Bar deal with the BYU football program. You get the Smarty uh, athlete deal that is uh, from the smart the woman's side of things. You pitch all of the entrepreneurs, the tech bros, the venture capital firms, the Silicon Slopes. You pitch anything and everything. You throw it all at Antoine Davis and say, you come to Provo, you can be the guy who makes the six figures of NIL here. This is where you can do it. This is where you should do it and get him into your program. Obviously, there are going to be plenty of other programs who make that pitch to him, but Antoine Davis, this is a very interesting thing. His father, this is the quote from the Detroit News. If I wasn't his coach, I would tell him to do exactly what he did, Mike Davis told the Detroit News on Saturday. You have an, a chance to make a half million to a million dollars in NIL, and you put that money in the bank and you don't spend it, let it sit for 10 years, that's pretty impressive. It's hard to turn that down. So this is a kid who played for his father for four years in college. Has, his dad is encouraging him to go get an NIL deal. This should be uh, just an easy pitch for any program out there, especially one like Mark Pope. We all know that Mark Pope maybe is the best salesman of anybody I've ever met. If he was selling used cars, I'd probably end up buying a car from him. He is a true salesman in every sense of the form. 
And if you're going to go to a guy like Antoine Davis, you absolutely sell this hard that you can come and make that money in an NIL deal. And you do your best to make sure that those deals get done if Antoine Davis does pick the pro pick your program. Because guess what? If he doesn't get those NIL deals, that's going to reflect badly on you as a coach and you as a university as well as a basketball program. So crazy, crazy stuff looking at how Antoine Davis's deal might play out. Now, another player who's expected to come on an official visit this coming by way of Vanquish the Foe, uh, Rudy Williams, the Coastal Carolina guard who we have talked about on this podcast, a guy who shot incredibly well, has actually better shooting numbers in terms of percentages than Antoine Davis. Uh, Rudy Williams is going to visit BYU as well. And then also a report here from Robbie McCombs that Sean Drew Gordon, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. I believe it's, it's pronounced how it's spelled. D-U-R-U-G-O-R-D-O-N. How would you pronounce that? Drew Gordon is what I'm going that. Uh, said that he has a Zoom call set up with BYU coaches and he's planning to visit BYU sometime after that. He is a six foot six wing with a reported 45 inch vertical and also has three years of eligibility remaining. Go back to my reporting previously on this. I have been told, I was told this, this is going back almost three weeks now, that the targets for BYU in the transfer portal, and this is before all the transfers that happened ha- occurred, well, they're, they were looking for a big man in the transfer portal to pair with both the emergence of Fus Traore and Atiki Ali Atiki. You like those two, but you want another big man to help pair alongside them, if not two in that regard. Then BYU also wanted a ball handling guard. Antoine Davis fits the mold in that regard, as well as Rudy Williams. And then you wanted a high-level wing who had great athleticism and could fill it up from the wing as a scorer. Well, Sean Duger Gordon could be that guy. So there's a huge opportunity here for BYU basketball, and I'm very very interested to see how this all shakes out. But the fact that Antoine Davis is visiting the uh, program, the caliber of Maryland, but also is going to visit BYU. Hey, all you can do is get him on campus and try and sell him on what BYU is all about. You can point to Jimmer Fredette. You can point to Tyler Hodge. You can point to Danny Ainge and say, if you come here and you show out the way that we believe that you could show out here, you will be an all-timer. You will be thought of as one of the top, who knows, 10, 15 players in BYU history if you live up to the billing. BYU fans, there's nothing more that BYU fans like, and this is just me speaking, than a guy who is just a a god, lowered case G type god player on the court in basketball. Think of Jimmer Mania. Many of you back in the day of Danny Ainge, think of what he was like. Well, if a guy like Antoine Davis can really fill it up at Detroit Mercy and he can do something similar at BYU, there's no reason to think that he cannot have that same type of a following uh, notoriety, notoriety is a negative term, uh, that type of a a star that expands and allows him to become an all-timer for BYU. There's a long way to go in this. There's no guarantee that Antoine Davis is going to even pick BYU, but they're doing work in the portal, my friends. And we talked about this. I said that I'm going to withhold judgment until the end of the early signing period, or not the early signing period, the, the current signing period for BYU basketball to really judge Mark Pope and what he's doing as a coach. Well. It may come earlier than that. I believe May 1st is the deadline, if I'm not mistaken. And those of you who are more in the know on this, I, I've read up on this. But May 1st is the deadline for transfers to make their declaration of where they're going to transfer to and also still remain immediately eligible to play this upcoming season. So there's a two-week window here for Mark Pope to get things done. Obviously, you want to get Antoine Davis in here as soon as possible. Sean Dura Gordon, protect potentially Rudy Williams. Get them on campus. Show them everything you've got. Pitch them hard and see what you can get in terms of commitments, signings, transfers, all that stuff. There's a lot of work to be done for Mark Pope, and I am looking forward to tracking it all, but it appears that they are doing work in the portal. Some of you may have been afraid that BYU has been shying away from the portal. Not so. They're doing work. They're combing through it every single day, trying to find the best talent they possibly can. And if a guy like Antoine Davis wants that high profile in the NIL money, go sell him on it absolutely chase him to the ends of the earth and try and get a commitment from him because we knew we know all of us who watched BYU this past year they were starved for offense and if there's one thing that Antoine Davis is he is offense personified bucket getter at all three levels from deep at the rim in the mid-range game he can get his shots wherever he wants them whenever he wants them this would be a huge huge addition for BYU if they were able to garner his commitment. But like I said, it's a long way to go. He's got other official visits. He's going to get pitched hard by many of these universities, similar to what BYU and Mark Pope will do. 
but all you can do is request that official visit and see where the chips fall. All right, coming up here in just a moment, we need to get to some BYU football. A question sent in yesterday based off our conversation about the non-conference scheduling, how it appears it's going to go for BYU in 2023. We'll delve into that here momentarily, but first, let's talk about our friends over at Built Bar. Absolutely love this company. They are the best tasting protein bars that I have ever had. I mean that sincerely. Let me take on that graphic real quick. I'll actually show you right here. I have got one right here. Let's see what we got today. We have got a banana bread flavor, so there you go. I've got my Built Bars. I keep them down here in my studio. And I, man, I'm a huge fan of Built Bars. Let me be very honest with you guys. I am blunt with this. They are the best tasting protein bars that I have ever had. The macros are absolutely incredible. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. And if the Built Bar is not your style, give the Built Puffs a chance. They actually are incredible. They're the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're marshmallowy. They're soft. They're easy to chew. And the best part is they're still covered in that 100% chocolate, just like Built Bars. And the macros on them are similar to their counterparts in the regular Built Bars. Give them a shot, my friends. You can get to Built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15 while you're there. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off your order. They are the best tasting protein bars that I have ever had. I mean that sincerely. Give them a shot. That's promo code LOCKED15 at Built.com. Get and join the best tasting protein bars and do it with our friends at Built Bar. All right, time to talk a little BYU football now for a moment. And I want to remind you guys, we the lead up to the NFL draft is coming. What are we, uh, a week from tomorrow? Oh, my gosh. The NFL draft is going to be here a week from tomorrow. We're all expecting Tyler Algier to hear his name probably on day two, late day two, maybe early day three, but looking forward to it all the same. Right now, you can get ready for it with the Locked On NFL uh, mock draft series, which has been going on. They have revealed, I believe, picks one through 15 at this point in their mock draft special. Get it free and available wherever you get your podcast uh, from the Locked On Podcast Network. And also stay tuned, April 28th, tune into the Locked On NFL Draft's live coverage of the 2022 NFL draft. It'll have all three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. And for those of you dying to know who your team will take, that mock draft special is the way to go right now in the lead up to April 28th. So check it out, my friends. We are going to have the draft covered top to bottom, the first of its kind here on the Lockdown Podcast Network live coverage. And just a little bit of a tidbit, I'm probably going to be involved in certain circumstances, especially when it comes to BYU guys, as you would expect. All right, back to BYU football here for a moment. A question sent in uh, via email coming in from Jim. And Jim asked the question, he said, Jake, yesterday you talked, I guess it would be today, I'm, I'm referencing this yesterday. You talked about BYU football and the 2023 non-conference schedule. And as I talked about yesterday, Dave McCann reported that UNLV has canceled their 2023 and 2024 home and home series with the BYU football program. And that leaves Arkansas, Tennessee, and Southern Utah as the officially scheduled three games for BYU on their 2023 schedule as it stands currently with a TBA next to the game that they're supposed to play at Utah State that season. I said that it all depend, it feels like, for that Utah State game if the Big 12 goes to either an eight or a nine game conference schedule. And that's where Jim's question comes into effect here. Jim asked the question, Jake, what do you think the Big 12 is going to do with regards to their scheduling philosophy? Well, Jim, to answer your question, what do I think they are going to do? I am of the opinion at this juncture that they're going to stick with a nine-game conference schedule. I think it's an easier sell for them to say, hey, we've got more high-level competition when we have more games against our intra-conference foes. What should they do in Jake Hatch's opinion? Go to an eight-game conference schedule. It doesn't hurt the SEC. The Big Ten is considering a move to that eight-game conference slate. I am of the opinion that you should have an eight-game conference slate, but also require your teams to play at least one, and in my opinion, I'd require two Power 5 opponents each season as well. So essentially, you get 10 games of Power 5 level uh, competition. You probably fit in a G5 program as one of those other non-conference schedules, and most programs are probably going to schedule an FCS game, even though I think they are a waste of time. So... What do I think they're going to do? They're going to go with that nine-game slate. So that would mean that BYU would have the home games against Tennessee as well as Southern Utah in 2023 and a road game at Arkansas. All three of those games, in theory, would be early on in uh, September, but that Southern Utah game could end up wherever you need to fit it in 
on the schedule. But if they do go with the eight game conference slate that I am an advocate for, then you fit Utah State. You play that road game up there in Logan and you call it good. I am of the opinion that the eight game conference slate is the way to go. But I also understand why the Big 12, considering they have been playing the quote unquote one true champion model they've had where they've been playing round robin, they've played all nine of their conference foes. They have a 10 team conference. It's really easy to do. I can get why they would continue with the status quo there and make it a nine-game conference schedule. Like I said, if it were up to me, if I were a Big 12 commissioner for a day and everything that I decided on that 24-hour, in that 24-hour period, was hard and fast and bound, letter of the law, that type of a deal, first thing I would do is say, we're playing an eight-game conference schedule. But we'll see what happens. And I think the schedule for BYU in 2023, regardless of if it is an eight or a nine game conference schedule, you get two other power five opponents, both of them SEC foes in Arkansas and Tennessee. BYU's got the work cut out for them in 2023. And if you go out and have a good season against that schedule, which you could face a, if you could face 11 power five opponents, and let's say you put up another just crazy 10 plus win season. Okay. BYU's reached the top 10 with all G5 conference schedule, not all conference scheduling, all G5 scheduling in 2020. They made it as high as as the top 10. They made it to the top 15 this past year after winning 10 games. Imagine what they could do if they went 10 and two against 11 power five opponents. Pretty darn impressive for BYU in 2023, but I've got no reason to doubt the BYU football program right now. They're absolutely lights out. They've been a ton of fun to track. They're a ton of fun to cover. And I am looking forward to seeing what they can pull out of their hat this year in 2022 and beyond. And I got no reason to doubt them. Let me be very clear about that, Jim. I am of the opinion that the Big 12 is going to go with that nine-game conference schedule. But regardless, I am bullish on BYU's chances this fall. And I'm going to be probably just as bullish going into 2023 unless 2020. BYU seemingly falls right back on their face and backslides into mediocrity. I am not I am not saying that's going to happen because I am of the opinion that BYU is well stocked and is ready to make a deep run this year and I know deep run sounds weird cuz that's more of a college basketball type term but this BYU football program I'm pretty darn impressed with them right now and I I'm very bullish on their chances upcoming. So We'll see what happens, but thank you for the question, Jim. And as always, you guys can reach out via email to send in your questions. That's locked on BYU at gmail.com is the email address or send them in via uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You can just search out locked on Cougars or locked on Cougars podcast. You'll find us there. And my personal Twitter feed, you can send me a message anytime you want. Jacob C. Hatch is the handle. Love hearing from you guys and getting your interaction right here on the show. All right, coming up here in just a moment, we will get to our player countdown. We talked about the top 50 players in the independent era. We also got the top players of all time in BYU football history. We've done 50, uh, the number 50 in both of those two top 50s. Well, today we talk about number 49 in the all-time poll. Who is the 49th best player, according to Jay Catch, in BYU football history outside the independent era? We'll get to that here momentarily. First, though, a note on our friends over at rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your lo- local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts available for your vehicle. Why would you endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning while the person behind the counter orders the parts, uh, parts on their computer, choosing only the brands that their warehouse happens to carry? You've got computers with access to rockauto.com uh, rockauto.com at home and in your pocket so you can save time and money when using rock auto right now i can speak to this directly because they have saved me time and money I had to replace a blinker light on my daily driver it was really simple i hopped online searched out my vehicle found the right year and then i said hey i need this type of a light it came up with like 10 different options i selected one it was shipped to me to my house in like two days i replaced it life's good That is what Rock Auto is all about, my friends. Why would you choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto's prices are always reliably low for every customer. And the best part is you can go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution for all of your auto parts needs. So once again, go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. This is a uh, family-owned business serving customers uh, for over 20 years online. Give them a shot, my friends. And while you're there at rockauto.com, make sure you're right locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. All right, 
Now to round out today's show, got two different things we need to cover. We had a busy Wednesday slate of BYU games to get to, but we'll get to those momentarily. Let's talk about the number 49 player in BYU football history. Uh, we talked on, uh, so that'd be Monday's edition of the show. We highlighted uh, Locke Hamuli is one of BYU's all-time running backs. I think underappreciated for what he did for the Cougars in the mid-1980s. We're going to talk about a compatriot of his actually in the BYU backfield at number 49, and that is Vi Sikahema. You may know him as now Elder Vi Sikahema. He is a member of the Quorum of the 70 for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a longtime news anchor in the Philadelphia area, came to BYU from Arizona, and Vi, uh, a guy that I've gotten to know on a fairly uh, personal level, a great great human being, but more importantly, a fantastic football player. His career at BYU, there's nothing really that points to like, okay, this guy's an all-time legend, but there's one thing that I think most BYU fans who are of the age to remember watching Bicicahema play will remember his legendary punt returns. He was an electric punt returner. We all talk about you punt, you die with James dying in the mid-1990s. Well, I don't know what you want to say. You punt, you Sikahema? I don't Vice Gehenna was lights out as a return man for BYU. First career as a return man, he had 153 returns in his career, 1,312 yards, just three touchdowns, but two of those touchdowns came in 1984 as BYU went on to win the national championship. He averaged 23.2, oh, excuse me, 8.6 yards per punt return. So that's punt return yards, my apologies. And he also had 42 kick returns for his career, 973 yards there, an average of 23.2 yards as a kick returner, no touchdowns. But then he also contributed on offense for BYU. For his career, rushing-wise, he had 112 carries for 745 yards and 11 touchdowns. In 1985 was his best year on the ground, 383 yards and 6 touchdowns. But then also was a lights-out receiver for BYU. 53 career receptions, 658 yards and two touchdowns in that regard. His best year in that regard and the receiving department came in 1985 when he caught 36, uh, 36 passes for 526 yards and the aforementioned two touchdowns as a receiver for BYU. Vice Kahema, a do-everything guy for BYU. He's just been a, an absolute proponent of BYU football. He wants nothing but the best for the Cougars. And let's put it this way. There are members of the church hierarchy who think the BYU football is like whatever. Vysak Hema ain't that. He knows the value of BYU football. He knows what it brings to the church. So there's, there are good advocates to have in BYU's corner. Elder Sekahema is one of them, and he is number 49 on our all-time BYU football countdown list. And for those of you tuning in maybe for the first time, what we're doing is we're counting down the 100 days, weekdays, let's be clear about this, till BYU football returns to our lives. We're 136 days away, officially uh, from the football season kicking off. It's crazy to think it's coming that quickly, but at the same time, it's been a long time since we have watched the Cougars on the gridiron. So what we are doing is I'm doing the top 50 players outside of the independent era for BYU – and then we're also doing the top 50 players of the independent era for the Cougars. And it's all subjective. It is me. I am the committee. Jay Catch is the single committee member who is making these selections. So if you disagree with them in a future episode or you disagree with Vice Hema being only number 49, send all your hate mail to me. I'd love to interact with you guys and get your take on this. But that's what we're doing. So tomorrow we'll talk about number 40, 49 of the greatest players of the independent era for BYU, essentially the past decade plus. Yesterday we highlighted Colby Pearson at number 50. Who will be number 49? Well, tune in tomorrow and you'll find out. All right, final things before we go here on today's show is congratulations to the BYU men's and women's track and field teams. They are both ranked inside the top 10 in the country. If I'm not mistaken, let's double check this. Yeah, so both teams, the men's and women's team are both ranked number eight in the country. And the good news is if you want to go watch the number eight ranked Cougars. You can do that this weekend, beginning actually today. They're hosting its first meet of the season on the outdoor circuit with the Robison Invitational, the Clarence S. F. Robison Track and Field Complex that begins today and run through Saturday. Uh, the schedule is tentative based on weather, all that type of stuff. Uh, women's events begin at 12 p.m. Mountain Time today, Wednesday. Men's begin at 12.15. And like I said, that continues all the way through Saturday. Uh, always a great competition. The Robison Track Complex is one of a kind. It's got great views. It's a fast track, and it should be a big opportunity for all BYU fans if you want to get out to the Robinson Invitational. But that's not the only thing happening today on a Wednesday for BYU. Men's volleyball.
volleyball begins play in the MPSF tournament. They face off against number three seed Pepperdine. That'll be at Poly Pavilion in Los Angeles, California. Uh, that match is scheduled to begin at six o'clock mountain time. There's a live stream link on the BYU Cougars.com website. If you want to watch the men's volleyball program, be a big upset for them to take down Pepperdine in advance in the MPSF tournament, but it's that time of year. Survive in advance. If BYU Volleyball wants to keep playing volleyball, you got to win this match. Pepperdine tonight. That'll be at Poly Pavilion down there on UCLA's campus. And then also BYU Softball is in action tonight. They're hosting UVU in a crosstown clash matchup at Gale Miller Field. That'll be at 6 o'clock first pitch. BYUtv.org and the BYU TV app will have that game for you guys if you want to watch it. A uh, big opportunity for Gordon Eakin's squad to uh, get back into action. They had a whole week off last week due to weather concerns. So, a big opportunity for the BYU women's volleyball, uh, no, women's volleyball, women's softball program as they take on the UVU Wolverines this evening. So there you go. You are up to date on everything you need to know about here on Locked On Cougars. Of course, tomorrow on the show, we'll continue to look at everything going on with BYU basketball. Who knows? It's a, literally a soap opera at this point. It feels like day by day, we continue to find out more about the Cougars. Will another player enter the transfer portal? Tune in and find out. We'll break it down for you guys. Anything that I learn, I'll be happy to pass along to you guys. And we'll also talk some BYU football. I had originally intended this week to talk about projected uh, depth charts for BYU football uh, throughout this week. Well, guess what? With all the news flooding in, I have not had an opportunity to get to that. So maybe we'll get to that tomorrow. If not, you guys can send in your questions. Maybe we'll do a mailbag segment. We'll have a lot of fun regardless. So tune in then. Thank you once again for making us your first listen of the day. I want to encourage you guys now to get over to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast and make it your second listen of the day. We, Like I said, we're just over a week away from the draft. They are breaking it down every single day on Locked On NFL Draft. The host, Ryan Tracy, and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker are doing a bang-up job. You can get that free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like this one on YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, regardless. Check it out, my friends. It is worth the price of admission, which is free. So there you go. That's today's show. A huge thank you for your support, as always. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, and of course, rejoin us here tomorrow. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for April 20th, 2022. See ya.